So, hi and welcome to our presentation about a productive use case of the open search component data prepper. Especially it is about an observability service um, that uses data prepper to support the ingestion of open telemetry signals into open search. Hi, I'm Yannick and I'm a software developer at SAP. Me and my team are working on observability services, especially logging services, within the SAP business technology platform. And I'm really happy that I'm presenting here together with David, who is one of the maintainers of Data Prepper. Yes, thank you. Uh, SAP is doing some really great stuff with Open Search and Data Prepper, so I'm honored to be here presenting with Yannick. I'm David Venable. I'm a senior software engineer at Amazon Web Services on the Search, Search Services team. I am a maintainer of the Open Source Data Prepper project, which we'll be talking about some. And I also work on Amazon Open Search Ingestion, which provides serverless ingestion pipelines for Amazon Open Search. Coming to the agenda, first I'll start by giving you an introduction about the service that uses Data Prepper, and it's called SAP Cloud Logging. Following that, there will be some motivational aspects on why we want to support open telemetry and why we need Data Prepper. Then David is giving you a general overview of Data Prepper. Afterwards, let's look into how we actually integrated Data Prepper into our solution, what it enables us to do in open search, as well as some of the motivational challenges um, that come with it, such as ingestion performance and stability. In the end, there will be a note on the collaboration between both of our teams. So what is SAP Cloud Logging? Users can use it, use it to store, visualize, analyze their application logs, metrics, and traces. And they can ship observability data from different runtimes, such as Cloud Foundry, Kubernetes, and Kuma. It is an instance-based service, uh, which is based on open search and running on Kubernetes. And instance-based means, means that each customer gets dedicated resources provisioned, such as an own open search cluster for each customer. And on the picture, we can see that it also comes with a set of predefined dashboards for um, the specific runtimes, um, allowing users to start analyzing their applications. If you want to know more about how cloud logging works together with Open Search, there was the keynote, which uh, ended roughly an hour ago, uh, where my colleague Harry was also part of um, providing more insights. So in case you missed it, you might watch the recording later. Um, just to give you an idea at which scale we are running, currently we have over 7,400 SAP internal customer instances, and the service is heavily used now internally for uh, two to three years. Since December last year, we are also um, generally, uh, generally available for external customers as well, and with that, we went live with our open telemetry features through Data Prepper. And there we also can see a great adoption so far. But what exactly is open telemetry and why do we want to support it? So in general, it is this collection of APIs, SDKs, and tools to instrument, generate, collect, and export your telemetry data. It even comes with its own telemetry exchange data protocol called the Open Telemetry Protocol, um, implemented via gRPC and HTTP. And uh, it supports logs, metrics, and traces. For our service, it's basically this harmonized way to extend the logs analytics use case and offer trace analytics as well as metrics. It is the CNCF standard for observability. Yeah, and from a customer perspective, it provides or it promises that you can easily instrument your code. Um, it comes with various SDKs offering support for many programming languages, and there's even auto instrumentation which can take a lot of work off your shoulders. Uh, furthermore, it's open source and vendor neutral, whereas our service is now one of the possible observability backends or open telemetry backends. So now to the question how Data Prepper comes into play. In general, it is this data collector managed by the Open Search project. It supports the Open Telemetry protocol, but um, also covers more than just our use case. Uh, we need it because um, Open Search provides this trace analytics um, plugin, which you can see here on the picture. It lets you analyze the trace groups of your applications. You could even click on them and um, analyze specific traces and also the trace spans, which are contained in those traces. And there's also uh, the so-called service map, where you can uh, have a look at the communication between your different um, applications. And those views, they require specific underlying indices with uh, specific field names. This is where Data Prepper comes into play, to, to map the incoming data into the expected format. So 
uh, since we integrated that development to our solution, a customer can just uh, ingest on telemetry traces and then use this trace analytics plugin um, out of the box. Now I will hand over to David with the next topic. Thank you, Yannick, for giving that overview of the cloud logging solution. I'm going to talk about Data Prepper, talk about what it is in general, and specifically how Data Prepper supports trace analytics use cases. So first of all, I want to clarify where Data Prepper sits in the open search platform. I did talk about some of this yesterday, but I know not everyone was there. So first of all, we have Open Search Core. That's the set of REST APIs that provide distributed Lucene. Uh, I think probably everyone here is familiar with that. Then we have Open Search Dashboards. This is a tool we can use to visualize and query our data. Specifically for analytics use cases or observability use cases, such as trace and logging, uh, there's a fantastic observability plugin that some colleagues of mine maintain with Open Search Dashboards. Data Prepper sits here on the ingestion side. So you can use Data Prepper to get your data into Open Search Core so that you can query it. I'll give an overview of uh, what it's about. So first of all, it is an open source project, uh, Apache 2 license, and part of the open search project. We support distributed traces, logs, and metrics. We actually started with that as our primary use case, but we've uh, grown beyond that. So you can use it for specific analytics if you need. Uh, you can also use it for search queries or search use cases. Use cases. We can use it to, it has a set of processors that you can use to filter your data. You might want to enrich your data, normalize it, and prepare it for use. Uh, we're going to talk about that uh, a bit in a little bit. Uh, it provides buffering capabilities, and we have stateful processing. And that comes into play a lot with trace pipelines, uh, because we're going to want to accumulate our spans. And I'll explain that some. We can also route data. So if you want to send some data to one cluster and some to another, we can support that. Or uh, another use case we've seen is sending data to Amazon S3. This shows our reference architecture for using Open Search and Data Prepper with the Open Telemetry uh, uh, ecosystem. So you're going to have your applications out there, and you can instrument them using the OpenTelemetry uh, SDKs and auto instrumentation. Uh, Yannick touched on that a little bit. And when your application is instrumented, it can now send the span data to the OpenTelemetry collector. You're going to have one of those collectors running as another process on that machine if you're using EC2, or perhaps as a sidecar if you're running something like Kubernetes. The collectors for all your different applications can then go send to one single data prepper cluster that you can run. And that data prepper cluster will then be the front end for pushing that data into OpenSearch. I'm going to talk some about pipelines. That's the fundamental concept within data prepper. So you always have a source and at least one sync. That sync defines your destination, and the source determines how you get the data. In our case, we're going to be sending data over uh, gRPC for open telemetry. Data Prepper also supports the idea of buffering. I talked some about that yesterday. Won't really talk about it much today. And we also have a rich set of processors. And those really come into play for these types of observability use cases. Like I mentioned earlier, we support routing data. And you can do this conditionally as well. So by default, if you define multiple syncs, you're going to send all the events that you receive to all of your syncs. But you can also create conditions so that maybe some data goes to one sync, and then other data goes to another set of syncs. It's all up to how you define your pipeline. Now, when we make a modern web application, we have clients that are making requests to those. And from the client's perspective, the client's just making a request and getting a response. We know behind the scenes, though, that we have a lot of different applications running. Even simple, uh, even simple web apps are going to have multiple applications, typically. And we want to be able to understand what that web request looked like. And that's what a trace is in the hotel world. So a trace represents basically what your external client saw as a request and response. Now, within that trace, we have different pieces. And those are spans. 
So every individual application that you have in that web request is going to have at least one span representing its part of the work. Now, you can actually get even more granular if you want to have spans that uh, look at important parts within different applications. Uh, but for our purposes, we could just generally think of getting a span per application. Again, all of those spans, you'll have all of those sent to Data Prepper. And so Data Prepper is collecting all those spans to build the traces. With that background, let's look at our Data Prepper trace analytics pipeline. Uh, we have a pretty standard pipeline that we recommend people use for trace analytics so that when you get the data into OpenSearch, it's ready to be used by the OpenSearch observability plugin. So we get our events and we send the raw spans to our trace processor that enriches those spans so that they can be uh, visualized clearly inside of the observability plugin. We also have a service map processor. This is also a stateful processor. And so what it'll do is it'll collect the spans. And looking at those spans, it's able to build a map of service relationships. So if we have one application calling to another, we can see an edge that connects those two. And not only that, but we can get some information, such as error rates between two services. Both of those pipelines are going to send data to OpenSearch. You'll typically send to the same OpenSearch cluster, but they'll actually send to different syncs. Yannick will talk a little bit more about that later when he gets into some of his details. Uh, and sending those different syncs will help work really well with the uh, observability plugin. I want to talk about one feature that we've offered with Trace Analytics uh, called tail sampling. So you get a lot of web requests. We know we have a lot coming in. And at some point, you probably want to sample that data so you're not getting all of it. Well, we sample logs, and those are pretty easy, typically, because the log has everything you need to know. Does the log say it was a success or an error? OK, let's sample. But it's a little more complicated with traces, because really, the decision to sampling needs to be made on the whole trace. You don't want to sample spans, because then you're going to have partial traces. That's not really useful. So you want to be able to, uh, you want to, be able to sample at the trace level. And so what we can do is we can have uh, Data Prepper provide this capability. Now, just kind of depict how that works, we're going to see like one application sends one span. Again, that's just a part of the overall picture. And they can come in any order. We don't know. And again, they're all coming from a distributed system. Then we get our next and our next. So here's a possible pipeline you could create. I have simplified it a little bit just to elaborate on the tail sampling part. So what we can have here is the tail sampler receives some of the spans that we've received. And it's going to hold on to it so that we can collect spans over time. Then we get the next, and then maybe the last one. Now we have enough information to make a decision on the overall trace. Was it a success? And if so, maybe we want to sample it. So say only get 20% of successful responses and send those to open search. Again, with routing capabilities, you can actually send everything to S3 so that you can have a complete record if you ever need to look it up. I want to touch on log analytics pipelines a little bit. Uh, you can make a really simple log analytics pipeline with an OTL collector and OpenSearch. It can be pretty straightforward. But what we've also found is that a lot of people have known patterns uh, even within the message part of the OTEL. Uh, of the hotel log event. And so we've seen that a lot of people will use some of our processors, such as the Grok processor, to look for known patterns and try to get more data so that they can enrich, enrich the data that goes into OpenSearch and have it better prepared. Uh, we actually also see that sometimes customers will have like Grok within Grok or trying multiple different patterns because they might have logs coming from all sorts of different applications. Uh, a few other processors I want to mention that can really help here. We have a key value processor. Uh, that's a pretty common pattern where people have uh, keys and values that they want to parse out. Uh, we also have a parsing JSON processor. And another one that we're seeing a lot of interest in that we've added recently is an obfuscation processor. This allows you to uh, mask certain values that you want to protect before you send it to OpenSearch. Finally, I do want to mention we also have a metrics analytics pipeline. Uh, it looks very similar to this, but you're typically not going to have any processors. So OTEL goes directly to our, o our OTEL 
uh, metric source and data prepper, and then that goes to open search. And with that, I'll hand it back to Yannick to go into more detail. So since we now know the motivation and also the details of Data Prepper, I want to jump right into how we use Data Prepper in production. And there are some challenges that come with it, such as high availability, cost, performance, security, and monitoring. And there's always a trade-off be between uh, cost and uh, performance, because we want to run with minimal resources while still achieving a great uh, with, with minimal resources, sorry, uh, while still achieving a great performance. Okay, I'll start by looking at or showing you the component architecture. Um, our components are colored in blue here, and I will go from bottom to top. So at the bottom we have Open Search, which is Data Prepper Sync, and of course the observability backend. Then above that we have Data Prepper. Uh, here we can see our pipelines. Um, on the right part, we see the three pipelines for trace analytics, which David covered already. Um, and then we have a logs and metrics pipeline each. Data Prepper exposes, um, or we, you can ingest signals via three different ports, and they are not directly exposed to the internet. We have a reverse proxy component placed in between. And this allows us to uh, exp or offer one unified ingestion endpoint via gRPC where users can ingest their telemetry data. A second reason is that the reverse proxy also allows us to do load balancing when running multiple instances of Data Prepper. And this works in a zone-aware way, so we try to avoid cross-zonal traffic when communicating with those Data Prepper instances. Uh, the last reason for the reverse proxy is that we can also integrate it with our internal security module. This allowed us to um, secure it by M mutual TLS, as well as managing the certificates and also performing certificate rotations. So on the sender side, it can bas be basically any open telemetry instrumented application, or uh, as the open telemetry collector. We also heard of it yesterday in, in the presentation about open telemetry, and there we can target this unified ingestion endpoint. I already talked about running multiple instances of Data Prepper. Um, here we can see how we actually run it on Kubernetes. So we run a Kubernetes deployment with two separate pods, and those are running in two different availability zones. Uh, this is due to uh, the reason of being highly available so that we can overcome the outage in one availability zone. Then we use service and ingress for um, internal routing and exposing Data Prepper with the reverse proxy to, to the outside world and we use config map and secret to configure it. We also have this Kubernetes headless service, and this is required for one specific component within Data Prepper called the peer forwarder. And this is required because Data Prepper does stateful processing with the trace spans, meaning that traces or that spans from the same trace group always needs to be processed by the same Data Prepper instance. And this peer forwarder allows us, or this headless service allows us to do DNS lookups inside the clusters, getting the pod IP addresses so that Data Prepper can talk to um, the right pods and forward trace bands to the right pods. Okay, um, all these Kubernetes objects are deployed in a separate Kubernetes namespace for each customer. And uh, to manage the, the deployments, we use the concept of Kubernetes operator to automatically watch and reconcile those objects in applying updates. Going away from Kubernetes, with the next slide I want to show you what kinds of entities or objects exist in our managed open search cluster. So we have three different object kinds mainly. First of all, we have the index templates um, for defining the index settings and mappings for the actual indices, uh, which we have here. Um, there we decide between indices for logs and metrics and indices for traces, so um, the logs indices um, their data prepper creates an index every day in our case. So we have daily indices here um, for traces. This is slightly different because the logs and metrics plugin are not supporting this yet. Here, data prepper only creates the first index, and an ISM policy is responsible for uh, rolling over this index, which is mapped to an index alias, so that uh, we get new indices. Um, there we could define conditions, please roll this index over after a certain index size or a certain index age has been reached. Um, and this is not the only thing the ISM policies are responsible for. We uh, they also consider data retention. So we can define that they should delete uh, indices when they have reached a certain age. Even though Data Prepper could also upload index templates and ISM policies, we decided to do it via our custom open search operating logic. 
this way we can also um, reconcile those objects all the time and apply updates without having to restart data prepper. Now I will talk about a specific configuration of our managed data prepper instances. Um, first, we have the core configuration. Um, here we have a file called data prepper config YAML, where we could configure the peer forwarder, which I've already talked about, as well as circuit breakers. And circuit breakers are responsible for rejecting incoming signals in case uh, the heap utilization of data prepper would get too high. We also have an init script, which is responsible for starting data prepper. But before we want to start it, we want to ensure that every uh, object, which I've showed in the slide before, is existent in OpenSearch and that OpenSearch is ready um, for ingest. We have other configuration as well, such as logger configuration or the Kubernetes probes, but they're only mentioned here. Then we have also the pipeline configuration. Here I picked the metrics pipeline to show this to you. Um, in the code snippet on the right, we can see the different pipeline components, uh, which David already mentioned. So uh, we see that we're using the open telemetry metrics source, we're using this in-memory buffer, um, the open telemetry metrics processor, and of course the open search sync. Here we see that it works with basic authentication, and um, I also uh, the last line, we can see that it creates those daily indices with the state format, uh, which I've showed you on the slide before. We can also set some performance impacting parameters, such as a number of pipeline workers and buffer size, um, which is how many records we can store inside the buffer, as well as the batch size, which is how many records we can simultaneously read from the buffer. If you want to know more uh, regarding the metrics ingestion, there's always, uh, also a blog post which our colleague Carsten, or my colleague Carsten has uh, published. This contains details why it is useful to ing uh, ingest metrics into OpenSearch, even though it isn't a time series database. Okay, then I want to cover some, or how we monitor data prepper. In general, we are scraping metrics. Uh, it exports via Prometheus and build a Grafana dashboard on top of it. Just to give you an example, what kind of metrics we are monitoring there. Um, we have some Kubernetes resource uh, consumption metrics, such as CPU utilization and memory consumption. Uh, also, uh, we can monitor the JVM heap, because, uh, as data prepper is written in Java. Um, then we can see when uh, circuit breakers get triggered or how many spans are processed by the peer forwarder as well. Also some indexing stats uh, in OpenSearch, such as, uh, for example, the document flow per second, as well as how big indices are at a certain point in time. And uh, what's really nice, we can really monitor every pipeline within Data Prepper. We can see the number of received requests, uh, records going in and out the individual pipeline components, as well as the pipeline latency and the buffer usage, and many more. Okay, now I want to come to the part where I show you what you can get by ingesting open telemetry signals into OpenSearch, and what our customers get by using our service. So, um, first of all, it's what I already mentioned, it's the ability to use the Trace Analytics plugin, which is already con contained in OpenSearch. Uh, this exact picture I already showed you. Um, on the next slide, there is a more detailed picture, which contains the view on a specific trace um, we have here. So we can see how much time it's spent in which of your services. And we also get this nice timeline presented where we see each trace span. On the right, we would also have a switch where we could uh, yeah, switch to the raw data of those spans and inspect, for example, uh, individual resource attributes or span attributes there. Of course, we could also look at the data in the Discover tab in, op uh, in OpenSearch or users create their own dashboards. However, we also started to offer our own predefined dashboards for the open telemetry um, ingestion. And I picked two dashboards, uh, which I want to show you. The first one is called Open Telemetry Spans and Logs. So on the top, we can see the server spans of the applications, and then below that, there are the logs. The interesting thing, thing is that um, the uh, logs in OpenTelemetry contain this trace ID field here, so we can actually reference traces and correlate between logs and traces. Uh, this is also here in the uh, top right, where we can see the log events grouped by trace ID. And on the bottom, we have a drill down where you could see the total events uh, grouped by service name as well as instrumentation scope. On the right, there's also the log events per, uh, by severity, which is basically the, uh, the log level. 
And just to give you an example uh, of a basic use case of this dashboard, we um, let's imagine uh, some user experiences any kind of error when performing a request in his application, uh, and he doesn't really know what, what the root cause is, so he could open up uh, this dashboard and um, try to narrow it down to the right time interval, which it, uh, when it happened, filter for the instrumentation scope and the service name, and maybe also the status code, which he experienced, and then he hopefully can see the right trace, and uh, the trace would already contain some details, uh, as well as the trace ID with which he could um, further troubleshoot by filtering for the respective logs um, that reference this trace ID. Uh, because of time reasons, I just want to quickly go over the second dashboard, um, which is called Open Telemetry Metrics Explorer. Here you can see basically all the metrics which you have ingested from all your applications. Um, and the top, we can see the top 50 metrics uh, by service name, then below that the instrumentation scope, and on the bottom part we see the top 50 metrics by name. Mm. We can also see the different kinds of metrics. In this case we have gauges, sums, and histograms um, in OpenSearch, and there's also the raw data section um, where you could open up individual metrics and uh, inspect uh, as well the resource attributes, for example. And the use case for this dashboard is to get an overview of your existing metrics, and um, create own dashboards on your specific use cases, for instance. Almost coming to an end, I just want to give you a quick overview of the um, performance and um, also some high-level insights. <coughs> so we did some performance testing with Data Prepper and asked the question, first of all, what kind of test cases we would need. Um, and there I've listed some of the performance affecting parameters, some of them you have already seen in the slides before. Um, we have different resource parameters which we could um, set in Kubernetes, for instance the CPU limit or the memory uh, limit, then also the heap size and the number of replicas. Regarding the core configuration of Data Prepper, we have the um, peer for water I've already talked about and uh, circuit breakers. So, one interesting thing uh, regarding the circuit breakers is, um, I already mentioned you have to set it to a memory value, and if the heap utilization is getting that high, then um, the circuit breakers try to kick in and reject incoming signals. So if you, we want to set it to 100% of the heap size, it wouldn't really make sense since then it's already too late and the heap is out of memory. So we would need to leave a certain gap between um, the circuit breakers and um, the heap. But we also do not want to make this gap as large, because then um, actually we had, I would have some unutilized heap space. Um, in our case, we set it to 95%, which worked out quite well. And then we also have the pipeline configuration, which um, uh, is the buffer size, batch size, and there are also some other settings, like for instance the number of workers and the delay which you can configure. Coming to some of the results, um, here we tested many different uh, yeah, configurations of those parameters, and um, here you can see one of them where we used a roughly heap size of 2.9 gigabytes for one data prepper instance and two instances of data prepper. For logs and metrics, we could observe ingestion rates going up to 30,000 log events and metric data points per second, which is quite a high number. For traces, it's still very good. It's 5,000 trace spans per second, but it's not as high as for logs and metrics. And this difference comes from um, the peer for water. So we identified that the peer for water was acting like a, uh, acting the bottleneck at this point. And um, this is because it does the stateful processing and there are ac uh, additional requests um, happening inside the data prepper pods. Mm. For logs and metrics, it could be possible that um, we also support more than 30,000 logs or metrics per second. However, this, uh, we, we uh, didn't go really to this point since uh, we speak roughly about ingesting 200 gigabytes per hour. Um, with those uh, kind of sizes, and this uh, yeah, isn't really fitting to our use case anymore since we have configured open search node in the end. Um, and yeah, basically, if you would increase um, the, the ingestion rates further, at some point, open search would become the bottleneck here. Now, to some of the challenges and learnings we had when performance testing data prepper. 
Um, the first thing I kind of already mentioned, it is um, the horizontal scaling for traces. So here we actually observe that when running only one instance of data prepper, we could achieve a higher ingestion rate than running multiple instances of data prepper. Here we already got some feedback from the data prepper team and also looking into some of the improvements. So this is still uh, a thing which we want to do. The second thing is that I learned to value the stability aspects and actually the stability is uh, or should be valued higher than the actual performance because uh, it doesn't really, uh, really um, bring you anything if you, uh, your service can ingest uh, or handle 30,000 events per second but then crashes after one hour because of some out of memory exception. And yeah, we have two different kinds of exception, container out of memory and heap out of memory. Um, instead of running out of memory, we actually want to generate back pressure and reject incoming signals uh, when, when there are overload scenarios. And um, now uh, I want to show you how we try to prevent the container from running out of memory. So um, at the first, uh, the first point is to find actually um, optimize, uh, optimal heap settings. In our case, this out of memory error happened due to the non-heap um, requiring more space and uh, this then run in these uh, ex kind of exceptions. So we try to find out how much space it actually required and then limit the heap size or decrease the heap size based on the needs uh, for non-heap operations. The second thing is how to prevent the heap from running out of memory. Here we can do two things. Uh, first of all, we can try to find optimal buffer sizes. So as we are using these uh, in-memory buffers, the higher your buffers are utilized, the more the heap is utilized as well. Um, so there we try to see if, for example, your heap settings can hold the buffers if they are fully utilized. And if not, then it's already a first si a sign that you should decrease them. There's also a behavioral difference in data prepper, how it stores the records between um, traces and logs and metrics. So I want to give you an example here. For traces, let's imagine uh, your incoming trace request contains five trace spans. There, data prepper stores each of those five spans into separate, uh, separate buffer entries. Uh, same goes for logs. But for metrics, if your incoming request contains five metric data points, then this whole metric request will be stored as one separate buffer entry. So in the end, we will have um, uh, larger buffer entries which could um, faster lead to out-of-memory exceptions. So there, we would recommend to use smaller buffer sizes for metrics compared to logs and traces. And the uh, uh, second aspect, how to avoid out-of-memory, already mentioned, is the circuit breakers, which would then act kind of a uh, kind of, uh, as of a last defender, um, when the heap is still uh, going over a certain limit, uh, we can say, please uh, reject incoming signals then. The last point is the simultaneous ingestion. Um, this is a challenge because um, yeah, the numbers which you have seen on the slide before, the ingestion rates, they uh, held when ingesting a single signal type at a time. We also tested with running uh, or ingesting multiple signal types, and there um, this becomes a challenge as the underlying resources are shared. So we don't have separate um, data prepper deployments for each signal type. It's all handled by the same instances, and um, there it also becomes a challenge to, to handle the stability here. <coughs> And with that, uh, I think we are already coming to an end. So um, we just want to highlight some of the collaboration aspects um, between both of our teams. And for that, I will hand back to you. Thank you, Yannick. To you and your team for the contributions you've made to Open Search and Data Prepper in particular. I, I want to highlight a few of their contributions. So first of all, we talked about the metrics and logs pipelines from OTEL. Uh, those actually would not even exist if it weren't for SAP. Uh, the maintainers originally created just the trace pipeline, uh, but it was their work that added those two new sources and enabled those use cases. Uh, so those were two major contributions that they provided. Uh, we've also had a few other contributions from their team as well. Uh, they've made some improvements to how our open search sync communicates with OpenSearch to help with some situations that they've seen in terms of how indexes are created. Uh, 
Uh, they've also contributed a number of fantastic GitHub issues where they've explained in detail some of the issues they've hit. Uh, in particular, they once had an issue where there was some uh, invalid data in some that caused uh, pipeline processing errors. And so we were able to resolve that with the great feedback they provided. They've also contributed blog posts and documentation improvements. So that was uh, one of the things that uh, came up in the keynote today, contributing back. Uh, I definitely encourage all of y'all to consider looking at contributions to the open source projects that we have here at OpenSearch. Uh, we're very open as a community to take feedback, both in the terms of issues or in terms of PRs. Uh, I know our team is really excited in particular to get uh, feedback from users. Uh, finally, I also want to say that because of the great work that the SAP team had done, uh, the maintainers uh, voted to uh, in, in, uh, welcome Karsten Schnitter as a maintainer along with us. We definitely believe this will help with uh, further collaboration and making sure that their input is very valued. And I also want to thank the Data Ripper team because um, we got some great recommendations in the first place when we started with performance testing, and we still are going to collaborate on, on this topic. Um, since this slide is covering Data Ripper topics, I also want to mention that we had a longer journey with OpenSearch and previously uh, as well with Elasticsearch, um, over six year long a journey already, and there we also had some uh, contributions in the past. And with that, um, we are at the end. Um, I linked some of the references of our talks. So the first one is the keynote where my colleague Harry was a part of, and the second one is the presentation from David, which happened yesterday. Um, and with that, I really want to thank you for listening. And yeah, in case of questions, just approach us. Um, we are open to do it.